Oh man, that's that's a good band right there. I like that band. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You are amazing, my friend. Fabulous community. It is my great honor and so much fun and joy in my heart to introduce you to my friend, Marcus Ellis. He oh. is the man that I say, I mean, he, he says, I love you to people and it changes their lives. Like that's his mission in the world is just to, to make people feel loved. And I met him at Grow for God last year. And he did a segment on stage and was singing. And if you saw my Facebook post, oh my gosh, it's, I love his creativity. He's such an artist and God has given him a gift and music just fuels my soul. Like I can go from this feeling to that feeling with a song in a moment. I mean, music has healed so many parts of my life, but what Marcus is doing now was like, okay. I have all this music stuff and I've done all these things, but God has captured his heart and radically transformed him and told him similarly to what God has told me. I want you to use that stage to open your mouth, to speak to the hearts of people, because Marcus has a story that's similar to mine. Like, We've been through some stuff, haven't we, brother? Like yeah. life ain't been easy on us. <laughs> <laughs> so Marcus, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, sister. Uh, you know, I love you to life, Angela. And I'm just so honored to be here and so excited to spend this hour with you because I don't get a lot of time with you. Uh, I do want to uh, express and say to the person on the other side of this video screen, or if you're listening or watching this on replay, that I love you. I sincerely and truly love you. You're not alone. You're seen. You're valued. And man, we are just appreciate you pulling up and listening and watching this podcast. That's right. I mean... And, and I, I think that's what really is the connection for you and I is that I genuinely love people. Amen. All people. Right. 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 Um, and I want to kick us off by starting um, a conversation that you and I were having before we got started. And, you know, um, I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, and so there's a heavy homeless population there. I mean, yeah. heavy homeless population. So I carry backpacks in my car that have, um, you know, toothbrushes, floss, like deodorant, all the things. And we were talking and, you know, my granny told me to keep my heart open. And I think that sometimes we can close our heart to things and be like, yeah. you know, what? if I give them money, they're going to use it for this. If I, right. And so I shared with you that for me, I just stop and pray. And I asked the Holy Spirit, like, what would you have me do for this person or not do right now? Right. He, so I know it's kind of vulnerable for you and you don't want to toot your own horn, but, and you're not doing that. I, I just want to invite you to share the story of what happened the other day with that guy. That Absolutely. You met. Absolutely. But real quick, you know, first of all, since you're in New Orleans, you're 180 miles from me. It's criminal that we don't get together more often. OK, I, we have got to we've got to remedy that. That's, yes. That can't happen anymore. And the other thing I'd like to say is I love that you carry around provision for homeless people because I've got a giant bag of socks right now in my car that's specifically for that. Right. Um, and, and we can provide for others. You know, we're the conduit through God. You know, God gives us the provision and it's up to us to dispense it, to disperse it. And so that could be monetary. That could be clothes. Like you said, that could be just walking up to somebody and saying, hey, do you have a second to talk? What's your story? Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. Um, and, and it's usually um, our veterans, you know, that have fought hard for us and suffer from PTSD and are not uh, able to be with their families, those types of things. So um, I just love it how heart-minded, heart-like-minded we are. That's not, that's not what I wanted to say. We're, we're uh, heart-like together. <laughs> I agree. And, uh, we never read on today, both of us. Ooh, we, didn't yeah. even plan. we didn't even nope. plan. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh, so the story was the other day, um, you know, and now I'm doing this every day. Uh, first thing in the morning, I pray. 
You know, first thing in the morning, I, I spend my time with God. I get up early intentionally so that I can do that in private. You know, I do come into my office and close the door and pray in secret, right? Um, just so I won't be, uh, I have a beautiful little girls, an eight-year-old and a four-year-old and, and a beautiful wife. And just so I won't be um, not interrupted, but, you know, while I'm in the middle of that, so I can be focused on it. But the prayer in the middle of a, amongst the bajillion other prayers with God is, God, please show me who to serve today. Whether that be in business, whether that be provision, whether that be an ear to bend, whether that be just to walk up to somebody randomly in the grocery store and tell them you love them. Right. And those are the things. So the other day I prayed for that and uh, I was going to meet my beautiful wife and my daughters and my mother in law for dinner. And I was coming off the interstate on this side and on the on ramp on the other way. And it's backwards on the camera for me. So it's messy. Um, but on the other side of the on ramp for the interstate, there was somebody, a gentleman with a sign. And I couldn't see the sign because he was facing the other way. Um, but it was just a. A lot of times, you know, sometimes, like you say, you stop and pray. It's not on my heart to help that person, right? It's just not there. It, it was just nagging at me. And like, I was, you know, I was in a hurry. I had to get somewhere, but I was at a red light. And I looked in my side view mirror on my driver's side and I could see the guy's mouth moving. And, you know, first inclina inclination, like everybody is, oh, he's on drugs. He's moving his mouth. He's talking to himself. But then I realized that he was saying, help me, help me, help me get home, help me get home. I could read his lips, help me get home. And I was like, oh my gosh, I put my car in park. Didn't care if the light was changing or not. People are honking. I had a $20 bill in my pocket. So I ran and I gave him that money. And as I got up to him, he had a sign. He said, help me get to Milton. I need to get home to Milton, which is the next town over in the next county, probably 20 miles. Right. Um, gave him the money. And then he said, oh, my gosh, thank you. I was praying for this. He was praying in his own way, whatever that was, by mouthing this, because it was like a mantra. It was over and over and over. Help me get home. Help me get mm -hmm. home. He was mm -hmm. saying it as I walked up. And he threw everything in his backpack. He got, he's like, thank you. And he, he got up. So I, I started crying. You know, as I got in the car, I didn't want him to see that. But. I was like, thank you, Lord, that for first, for granting me the provision to have the ability to provide for that gentleman. And mm -hmm. so, Angela, a, a lot of us don't realize, but we are conduits. God is working through us. And it yeah. took me 50 years to figure that out. Right. And man, if we if we don't open up that conduit, if we don't pray if we don't get silent and get those downloads, then we'll never know who to serve. And we don't serve to receive. We don't serve to be glorified. We don't serve for ego. We serve because of him, because he's asked us to, because that is our greatest commandment, right? What did Jesus say? You know, when the disciples asked the greatest commandment, he said, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And then secondly is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's like, it's the commandment. Why are we fighting? Why are we arguing? Why are we getting upset on different side of a political fence that doesn't matter? You know, why are we worried about what somebody else is doing? As long as it's not hurting you and your family, worry about yourself, baby. Don't so, worry about yourself. Yeah. So that's where we are. I mean, the greatest yeah. commandment is to love each other, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so that's what, where was from. what was it? Because you have a huge story. I mean, we could literally be on here for like three hours today at least yeah, and not even get through half of it. And and between the both of us, we've got like a big yeah. story. I have a bunch of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that brought you to this place that, that made you wake up every day and say, who can I serve? Who can well, I say I love you to today? Yeah, it's kind of a... Um, a windy road, you know, um, I was at that point getting into real estate. I'm a real estate investor full time now. Um, at the time I had worked for a pro audio and video and lighting company for 15 years. And when people think about that, they go, Oh, just, you know, setting up sound system. No, it's at Alabama, Auburn, Toronto, Blue Jays, the Superdome in New Orleans, the arena in New Orleans, the job I had, which I was national sales manager for a while. And then I became business development. Um, was to, you know, gather these clients. And the beautiful thing about it, I've always um, had the, the mindset of 
Yes, I want to make a lot of money. Yes, I want to have that. But if I'm hurting somebody, I mean, I'm a good salesman, Angela. I'm sale. That sales is what I do. I could be a farmy salesman right now, and I'm not. I'm not harping or or discounting anybody that's a pharmaceutical salesman. I know there's a lot of farmies that help people out, but there's a lot that don't. Right? I could do. I could own a bar and make Absolutely. a lot of money. My brother, I, we can own the business together. Imagine what we could yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, if we're not, if we're not conscious of what the outcome is of the way we're making money. So I always wanted to do something helpful. So in the music industry, I know that I'm setting up a sound system in TD Jake's church. That's going to broadcast to hundreds of thousands, right? That's going right. to do something positive. I know that at that school, that school system, those kids are going to be able to have a play and their parents are going to see them and hear them. And let, you know, so I knew at that time that that was, I was doing something good. Right. But it wasn't for me. Right. And so I started getting into the, the real estate market and through a real estate class, I found Clubhouse. And in a different real estate class, I found um, I got to think about it for a second. But uh, it's the Miracle Morning, Hal Elrod. Um, it's the book, The Miracle Morning. And he's got a bunch of them for entrepreneurs and stuff like that. But the message in that book was to get up early. Hal Elrod has a great story through live through cancer and all that stuff. Um, look him up. I don't know him personally. Um, but I started getting up early and, and this is before I was praying and all that. Now let, let me go back real quick. I, I was born into the Baptist church. I was born into being a Christian. Um, and I saw a lot of hypocrisy in the Baptist church as I became a teenager. I was first baptized in 1982, uh, by Dr. Brian Harbour, who coincidentally enough, his son, uh, is, and was my best friend. And he was now my podcast partner. And there's a whole nother story about that. We didn't talk for 30 years because we didn't have Facebook. And, and crazy, friend. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Oh my yeah, God. We'll yes. get to that in a minute. So okay. I was, so I got up early and I found breakfast with champions just on clubhouse because I was in, wanted to be entertained in that early morning when I was waking up and drinking my coffee and exercising mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And all of those folks inside that room, are baller business people, right? Like monster baller business people. And I, all of a sudden I took a notice that people were talking about God so nonchalantly, just so freely. And so there, there was no constriction, you know, growing up in the Baptist church, Southern Baptist, it was like all this stress and guilt and ah, this pin up stuff. And I'm not knocking the Baptist church. That's just what I felt when I was growing up. Uh, I literally one day was playing Nintendo in the mid eighties and it was a knock on my door and people in a van at first Baptist church literally said they came to kidnap me and took me off to witness to me and talk about something that would turn me away. That was the moment that I left that church uh, because the witness was so harsh, but in breakfast with champions, it was just, they were just, it was just flowing. Yeah. And it lit a fuse. It, it sparked it. It struck a chord with me. Right. And so all of a sudden I said, I got to get some of that. I, this feels good. And I dove into that and man, I really don't know when, when it changed. I, it doesn't matter. I just can't remember when it changed, but all of a sudden, you know, I'm at embrace your ambition. I'm at EYA at Dallas where we were like right next to each other and somehow didn't talk to each other. I don't know how we did not meet I each other. That that. Video. I'm like, I was talking to GP this morning. I, I have the incredible opportunity. And this is what God does with divine appointments and connecting people. I am at Jeannie Snyder's home right now. Like ridiculous. How much would you pay to go to quote unquote speaker school with oh. Dr. Jeannie Snyder? Uh, let, like, me get, let me get out my credit card. Hold on. <laughs> I'm like pinching myself going, what is actually happening here? I mean, I couldn't have set this up better myself and, um, and we just adore each other, but you know, it's crazy how God sets up those divine appointments and how we get yeah. those kind of things that happen. And, and, and so anyway, when they play that EYA video and I see you in the front row in Dallas, and then I see myself like catty corner, like two people behind you. And I'm like, how did I not meet him? Two yeah, years ago. Like, what <laughs> but you but, know what? We were in the room. Uh-huh. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We were in the room. Yeah. And we were, our energy was 
going back and forth. We were transferring that in. We were in the room. And that's why we say for this next convention plug here for Embrace Your Ambition in Denver. Is that where it's going to be? I can't be there, unfortunately. But get in the room. Yeah, you no, have I can't. To. I'm, I'm chaperoning young musicians at Universal, so I, I can't. Um, no, I'm not saying you. I I understand. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> right, be there. I know you would give anything to be there, and you can't be two people at one time. So, um, God knows the plan, but um, yeah, it's crazy. But somehow through that, I, I, you know, I really can't remember. I mean, maybe it was listening to you know Glenn in the morning on his Breakfast with Champions show, and then you know I started you know praying and things like that, but. All of a sudden, you know, I, I'm back. You know, when I was a kid and I got baptized, I was nine just before I turned 10. Um, there was that fire, you know, that fire you feel, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But there was also um, a different kind of uncomfortableness. There's, you know, people say, hey, if you want to succeed, get uncomfortable. This was different. Just something wasn't, didn't feel right. And I strayed from that. I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm 50 years old. I've been a musician since I was 15. And I went through the whole sex, drugs, rock and roll thing. Like I did it all. And I'm not proud of it. I'm not tooting my own horn, but I came out. I was fortunate enough to come out on the other side when a lot of my friends did not And so by hugging up to you and Tamara Andrus and Marcus Black and Ashley Faye Brandstetter and all of my uh, family now, I'm now at this point. And so as we were going through that to get back to my story, the election period was starting. And mm -hmm. on all my social media feed, there's all this hate and vitriol. And being, um, I'm also a, a big fan of the 1960s hippie rock band, Grateful Dead. I, I've traveled and followed them and I saw them 122 times in the whole, and it was a community. And I was there for the music because I'm a music guy. Most people will say, oh, you went and did drugs. No, I was there for the music, but that community is all about supporting and loving each other. So I already had the love aspect in my life and always did that type of thing. But during the elections, I was like, this has got to end. This has got to stop because it doesn't matter. I, I know I'm Angela. I'm not going to change your mind politically. You're not going to change mine. Uh, there is no reason to discuss this stuff online. And I said, you know what? My feed on social media is absolute garbage and I'm going to change it. So I started unfollowing all the, the folks and, you know, stop taking the bait and getting in it. And then I formed this group. Hey, guess what? I love you. And that came to me in a moment of prayer. Yeah. Uh, you can see in my bio, and if I'm talking too much, stop me. Um, in a moment of prayer, I was asking God to heal my singing voice because uh, in these advanced stages, it's a lot harder to sing rock and roll. And I immediately got a download that said, who, who I mean, I gave you your voice, but who said it was to sing? And I was like, That's my mind. And he mm. said, I want, you to, I want you to transform or transfer at some point from singing to speaking. And I'm like, that's my mind. Cause I don't, I've never had a desire to speak on stage. I mean, I love watching in you and Marcus and Tamara and all those people. I love getting motivated. Uh, but all of a sudden that was a download. The other download really quick was to start a podcast. And I'm like, I have no equipment. I don't know how to start a podcast. Next day, my childhood friend, Colin Harper messages me on Facebook and he says, Hey bro, I know we haven't talked for 30 years, but I need to talk to you. I called him on the phone. He said, I want to talk and want you to listen. I don't want you to say anything. I said, okay. And he says, I see you walking down the street, pointing your finger at the camera, telling me you love me. And something just tells me we need to start a podcast the very next day after that prayer. And I literally threw my phone across the room. Like right. literally. Like, right. threw it. like what? Yeah. Right. Just so you know, phone. <laughs> Go ahead. This is kind of awkward, but here's the thing. When I have a guest, I always have a notebook. And I'm, and I'm taking notes because I like to do the time markers because I do little clips on sure. YouTube. Like, the, like if you throw something down, brother, I got it. So I just want you to know, typically I can do it under the radar, but this is so freaking good already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking down, taking notes and I'm like, oh man, this is kind of. Isn't bad. God so good? He's so good. But I wanted to tell you when you were talking earlier, that scripture came to my mind. Um, let me see. I, I just wrote it down. That he will bring you back to your first love. Mm. And I felt like you needed to hear this. And so I looked up the scripture and it's Ephesians, thir uh, Ephesians 3, 17. And it says, then Christ will make his home in your heart. 
as you trust him. Your roots will grow deep down into God's love and that will keep you strong. Mm. Mm. So I just wanted to, I just, I'm just i like, oh my gosh, like you need to hear this, brother. You know, it's, and I, I got to find another adjective because I say crazy and I, what's amazing about that is in my prayer too, and you don't know this, but I asked Jesus, please take residence. Please take up residence in my heart and never leave. Oh. That's part of my prayer. And now it's funny. <laughs> Is that picture like I picture a heart with like little rooms in it and stairs and he's in there when I yeah. pray. But, you know, so, you know, it, it goes back to, to one. Right. Um, but so at that point in that prayer, Colin and I started the podcast. And in that same prayer, <laughs> God was like, I need you to tell people that you love them. And it came up in my mind and why I came up with the term, Hey, guess what? I love you is because I have three grown boys and I have two daughters that are eight and four. So I have a 24 year old son, a 20 year old son, an 18 year old son, and then an eight year old daughter and a four year old daughter. So the entire time we've been, I grew up in a very loving family where we said, I love you. It, it, it like, every, but it, it wasn't all peaches and creams. We all came off the rails like every family does. So we'll talk about that one day, but I wanted to make sure that my children know that they're loved. So whenever we're in the car, I'd be driving and I'd say, Hey, guess what guys? And they'd say, what daddy? And I say, I love you. And it was just the thing. Hey, guess what? I love you. And so, um, I don't want to call it a brand, but it is, yeah, it you know, is. it's, yeah. it's not intentional. Um, but in that same, so it get, I mean, talk about life changing, like moving a mountain in one prayer. I want you to speak on stages. I want you to start a podcast and I want you to tell people you love them in one download in one prayer. I still see. I what I was yeah. So now, as you know, I randomly walk up to whoever it's on my heart to walk up to. And I say, excuse me. And it, sometimes if it's a worker in a, in the building or whatever, I was like, do you work here? And I say, yes, excuse me. Has anybody told you that they loved you yet today? And you know, Angela, um, what? Answer to that. It, it's rarely negative, um, rarely negative. And, and, and I'm not harping on, but it's usually older ladies that don't take it well, you know, because what does this mean? <laughs> you know? uh, so, so I kind of like I'm a little bit discerning when it comes to that. But I'll, yeah. I will tell you more than half, well, let's say half, I'll get this reaction. And people start crying yeah. because they're not told they're loved mm -hmm. or I'll get that. Oh, thank you. I needed that today. Like I was having the worst day. I needed that. And then a lot of people will say, man, that is so amazing that you do this, but I don't feel like it's you telling me. And I was like, it's not. It's Yahweh. It's God. Oh, come on. It's God telling or, or they'll just come out and say, I don't think that's you. I think God's telling me that. And I'm, exactly. I'm not so great. But I'm answering the call. I've been chosen to tell people that I love them. Can you imagine? You know, and it even gets down to Angela, where the big biker guy walking through the mall, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not somebody force feeding it. You know, if, if we're force feeding somebody, God, you're just going to turn them off. Yeah. We have to lead by example. So that's why I have these, what I call job stoppers. You know, I got these tattoos, you know, so that one says Yahweh and okay. this one says love. And so somebody now it's, you know, I've only had these a couple of months, but people are like, why HWH? What does that mean? I'm like, oh, you got a second. And that is my, it's God. Yeah. Right. And it gives you an opportunity to witness. So I know I'm rambling, but I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. with you. <laughs> This is such a huge blessing because, you know, one of the things that I'm going to talk about at Embrace Your Ambition at the keynote is keep your heart open. Because this is what happens and the Bible says it is that, you know, it's because of the hardening of our hearts. Mm. And this world is hard. Yeah. Right. And so. My granny, who died at 96 years old. Come on. You know, um, and you really listen to somebody, right? If they're going to give you last words. And she took my hand. 
And she said, Anna, because that's what my family calls me, Anna. The world is hard and you have a tender heart. She said, keep your heart open. Mm. Mm. And I'll tell you, there have been times of betrayal, times of things that have happened in my life that I was like, you know what? I, I want to harden my heart. I yeah. don't want to feel this pain. I don't want to be subjected to this. But I remembered what she said. And di- isn't that what Jesus did? Amen. Well, and that, you know, go ahead. Ask me, ask me. So, so I guess that's what I would say is how do you keep your heart open? Well, it wasn't until recently. It wasn't until recently. Okay. It wasn't until recently. Um, I can be very jaded. You know, I can be very judgmental. Uh, you know, it's, it's really hard for me not to be judgmental. I'm a very critical guy, right? Um, you know, I, uh, we're all dichotomous, you know, we all have our good stuff and bad stuff. Uh, sure. but I have, a, I have a bad temper, you know, um, those types of things. I mean, it's like, uh, the, the old school incredible Hulk, don't make me angry. You wouldn't mm-hmm. like me I'm angry <laughs> is that thing. But I'm so grateful to so much alike. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. My, my sister from another mister. Um, I, I'm very blessed that God gave me discernment to where, you know, self discernment to where I can say, no, that's not who I want to be. And, I, and I'll try not to get emotional here. That's, that's not who I want to be. I, whenever I have an argument with my beautiful wife, Laura, it's like, that's not what I wanted to say. That's not who I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and it breaks my heart that I have that type of stuff. And we know that's the enemy creeping in, right? So if you do have a hard heart, there is there is a way out of it, you know? And, and I'll say something controversial, and I say it often, um, but it seems to me that a lot of Christians have Bibles with only the black words in them because they sure ain't reading the red ones. Read the red words in the Bible. It's all about love and supporting each other. First, yeah. loving God and each other. Yeah. So I try, you know, not try. I, I make an effort, a valiant effort to make sure that everyone is seen, valued, and loved. And if I've hurt you in the past, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. But that is not who I want to be. And that's not who I've become. Dude. Can you share just some of your history? Like, sure. I know you have a big testimony, but I feel like at this point, we've started out with like, we started with the icing on the cake. So we got to yeah. go to the- <laughs> <laughs> We got to make some eggs here, baby. <laughs> engineer this thing so people can understand where you came from and why um, you have this tender heart now. Well, I mean, my mother... It, it, you know, uh, man, talk about sacrificial love. My mom gives to a fault, right? And so I'm, I'm grateful for my mother. Um, I'll send this to her so she'll know I'm talking good about her. Um, it makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, she is so amazing and, and gives to a fault. I mean, um, I mean, what mom drives a bunch of kids and, and their friends to see REM in Auburn and then drive on Thanksgiving day from that show to Baton Rouge to see you too at UNO on the Joshua tree tour. I mean, what mom does that? Mine did, you know, I'm that mom. Yeah. So, but so my mom has such a tender heart and I'm so grateful that I have that. And then on my dad's side, it's the opposite. (laughs) And and my dad died recently and and I love him still, but um, we're Creek Indians. And there is a lot of generational trauma handed down. Um, Lots of stories we could get into. So um, I was an angry young man and I never Mm -hmm. understood why. I mean, it's uh, just such a dichotomous individual. I'll bite your head off the next second and I'll give you the hug the next, you know, the next minute. Um, So I was always judging, um, you know, especially church people. I'd see the politicians only come into First Baptist Church during election time. I'd see the Sunday school teacher get arrested for being with children, those types of things. And that totally turned me off of that. That, But I was still always praying. And I'm yeah. so grateful for that. You know, and, and it wasn't 
uh, like I am now, but I was always praying, you know, yeah. and always into music. My, my first musical love, I mean, my dad and mom would buy me Beatles albums for bass hits, you know, at eight, 10 years old, you know, so I, by the time I was 10, I had every Beatle album. The Beatles are my first love in music. People say, man, who's your vocal coach? Well, John, Paul, and George and Ringo. I mean, that was <laughs> yeah. what I grew up singing to. And I was very into music. And then I, uh, you know, I sang in bands and I, I really got into the Grateful Dead, like I mentioned. Um, and people that don't know what that is think it's some heavy metal, death metal band. It's not. It's a hippie band of peace and love. Lots of drugs in, in the culture, but that's not why I was there. But I did get into that. And for some reason, I don't know why, but before my parents split up at 15, I knew there was problems. And I always said to myself, you know, drugs seem very interesting to me. You know, uh, all the musicians, that's very, and if my parents ever get a divorce, I'm going to try that. <laughs> and here I am at age 50, still fighting addiction issues. You know, um, you know, in, in Florida, uh, cannabis is, is legal to a certain and I smell it. Everybody, oh, that smells good. You know, and, you oh know, my goodness. We, came, you go. we came through Montgomery to get here to Athens and yeah. the hotel I stayed in. I, I don't know. I don't I didn't know what I was doing. OK, but <laughs> all night it alternated marijuana and cigarette smoke all night. Yeah. long, And I was yeah. just like, oh, yuck. But there was a time in my life when that was the thing that comforted me, that took me away from all the pain that I was living in. So I get it, brother. Amen. Uh, you know, I say now to anybody that is struggling with addiction and, and I still fail, um, but I'm learning now that if let's say if I was to, to, to smoke some herb, my conduit with God is immediately broken at that point. Right. Cut it's off. just immediately cut off. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing that I know I would rather you eat cannabis than eat Oxycontin, <laughs> right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying for me, it breaks my conduit to get with God. So I have to be conscious of that. So I got into the whole sex, drugs and rock and roll thing. I did it all. I did it all. Every drug you can imagine. Uh, I slept around. I'm an adulterer. The whole thing. And I was never happy. I was always chasing something. I was always, you know, uh, I'm a lead singer. Um, I just said this joke on our dear brother Bruce Pulver's podcast this week. I said, how many lead singers does it take to screw in a light bulb? One, one to hold the light bulb and the rest of the world to revolve around him. <laughs> that was me. I to have him on the podcast. That's going to be amazing. Uh, oh, my gosh. Bruce is the uh, wordsmith. Oh my, one of my dearest friends. Yeah, yeah. But it was all about Mark Ellis. Yeah. Right? And, and once you get, figure out that that ain't the way, baby, everything changes. Once it, you know, you, you transform from all about me to all about who I can serve, everything changes. So as I went through all that stuff, I just realized that I prefer to help people rather than help myself. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to neglect myself, but I'm right. not going to indulge myself in those things that don't serve me and others. Right. I hope I answered the question. You did. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> did. And it's, it's so cool because, you know, one of the things about fabulous, right? right? Fab is for faith, abundance, and blessings. Amen. Right? Like what we have access to. The you is the you you. Mm. The most you, the you that doesn't hide, the you that doesn't need acceptance, validation, approval, who are you? And then the less is less of me. Ooh, when it's less yeah. of me, it's more of him. Right? So good. It's also less of what I don't want in life and more of what I do want. You know, and success is defined differently by different people, right? Right. Success to me is having all my babies around me, knowing that they are loved eating a meal together that'll blow your mind, you know, watching a movie, having a campfire, whatever. Like that is success to me. Come on. Not my vehicle. Now, do, now I do need some money for some sparkly things, but I, don't, <laughs> I, I get good deals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but success to me is when somebody has an opportunity 
to have an interaction with me and they go away with something that they Mm. can utilize in their life. Because here's the thing, Marcus, when I was driving around in California, 25 years old, left an abusive relationship after five years, I didn't have Google. We barely had cell phones at that time. Okay. Right. (laughs) You were still using a paper map. Yeah. 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 But I heard about boundaries. And it blew my mind. I had never heard about that. Yeah. And so I think about the woman that was me, right? The one that's driving around, not knowing what to do, not knowing what's happening, not knowing how to navigate an abusive, you know, situation, relationship, whatever. But look, brother, the Bible says that we go through the suffering that we go through so we can help anybody in any suffering Mm. with the same comfort that we receive from Christ in our own suffering. Mm. I mean, I know you feel that because you suffered a lot. Boy, how (laughs) come on. Boy, howdy. Yeah. I mean, we, we always, you know, we hear the cliches cause you and I hang out in the um, motivational speaking space and we hear a lot of the cliches, but your mess is your message that, you know, that thing is where people say, you know, I don't have a story. If you feel like you don't have a story, will you please reach out to my sister right here on the other side of the screen? Because she can show you your story, right? Everybody has a story. Nobody's had it easy. Even the people you think have it easy, right? And we're, we're just, I mean, I'm so grateful for, for all of this because you're talking about, you know, what is success to you? Uh, may I tell you the story of how I got here of, yeah. of, the, of the business side? Come on. I so, love it. so I was unhappy working at my 15 year old job and it's my own doing too, because I am the freak in the room and I'm proud of that. And I wave my freak flag high. I was in a, organization that is selling audio, video, and lighting, but nobody in there is a musician. Nobody in there understands. You know, we hear people say, um, you know, I'm a rock star. You're a rock star at that. Folks, I'm on stage in front of thousands of people singing. I'm not blowing my own horn, but I am a really rock star. I I sing roll in front of people. I love it. And I wasn't happy. And that doesn't pay the bills. That's my side hustle that, that feeds my heart. And I get a little bit of change off the side of that. But when I teamed up, first of all, I mean, you got, we can't do this without talking about Tamara Andrus because she has done so much for you and so much for me and I'll get emotional. And uh, I still desire to be closer to her than I am now, but let's, let's go back to where it started to when I attended the, the first grow for God for me in Lexington, Kentucky, which is now Mm -hmm. the founder. Okay. Let's go back even further. I was at the Breakfast with Champions in Queens event right when COVID was ending and then it kicked back in. But we had this opportunity to go to Queens in New York and Tamara was there. I didn't know her from anyone. And I boldly got up and said, I want to learn how to speak on stages because of that prayer. Right. I don't think I even talked to Tamara. I didn't even know her at, at that Breakfast with Champions event. So fast forward to where I do know who she is a little bit at Grow for God in Lexington. And the, the lady walks out in the crowd with a microphone and hands it to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I start speaking in front of everybody for five, seven minutes. I still have it on video. I want that video. Can you send that I, to of me? Course, of course. It, it, it's, I don't think it's anything special, but it is the beginning. Oh, stop. Yeah. And so, you know, I got, you know, set on fire. I met Anthony Hart. Uh, at that bro for God, who's my brother from another mother. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was the first, you know, awakening there. Now let's go back to, um, you know what? No, it's the, it's, this is the same one. Okay. Forgive me. So the same Lexington, Kentucky grow for God, there was a rapper named chance and I didn't know him. And he had C H A N C with a backwards three um, incredible rapper, Christian rapper. And, it was Thanksgiving. So that was the beginning of November when that Grow for God was there. So fast forward to Thanksgiving the same month. And mm-hmm. I was in a, a prayer room with a bunch of different other people. And Chance happened to be in there, but I didn't know him. Um, 
I had been prophesied to a little bit. At, no, it wasn't a little bit. It was a lot. Um, we all know um, uh, Keith and Lillian uh, Calloway. Yeah. And at that Grow for God, I was talking about, I really, I really got to get out of this place. It's killing me. I got to kill. I got to get out of my job. And, and Keith said, do you know why you're not quitting your job, Marcus? Because you don't have enough faith in God. And I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, as a two by four to the forehead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't you love those? Yeah. So that was the first one. Yeah. <laughs> and he, said, he said, do you know why you're not quitting your job? And I said, yeah, benefits. I need to fend my family. And then he said, no, you don't have enough faith in God. So that was the first, I mean, that was the big blow. Um, and I was so grateful that Keith was there when Anthony, he, Keith and Anthony baptized me at the, at the most recent founder con for the second time. Uh, love those guys. That was the first one. Then I'm on this call and in the middle of the call, Chance says, ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm so sorry. I got to stop. I have to stop because God's screaming at me. And I was like, this is so weird. And he said, and I need to talk to Marcus. And I was like, what? I don't even know this guy. And he said, man, I just got to tell you, God is telling me right now to tell you that thing that you know you need to do, that you have to do right now, that you need to go do that thing. And he's also telling me that he's going to reward you doubly for taking the chance, for trusting mm -hmm. him, all of that. And once again, Angela, you could have knocked me over with a feather. So what did I do? I made my decision that Monday. I had a little bit of savings. If I would have known what I know now, I wouldn't have done it because I had so little savings at the time. I walked into my job of 15 years. There's a whole story like that. We don't have enough time, but I went in there and I quit that day and walked out. I jumped out of the airplane at 30,000 feet without a parachute because right. God told me to. That's right. Not quite to the point of taking my own son like he did to Abraham, However, it's the same thing. And then all of a sudden I'm in this real estate space and God provides me with a house across the street. God provides me with the house next door. The little lady across the uh, diagonally from me provides me with a house that she had downtown. Come on. Then I'm worried about provision. Some man finds me on Facebook. We're not friends. We didn't know each other. We are now. We're beautiful brothers, but he didn't know about White Tie, my band. And he said, hey, I just somehow crossed your Facebook page and it just says one line buys houses for cash. I mean, I bought his house. God continued to provide for me. Yeah. And, the, and I prayed for that house across the street. I prayed and it was literally a meth house next door to me in a really nice neighborhood. It's not yeah. anymore. Yeah. 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 And he literally gave it to me because I prayed for those things. I prayed the other day who to serve. There's that gentleman on the street. There's the lady's house that I just am helping that's in foreclosure. Um, it, my, I prayed for God for three deals in a month. Guess what? I just got three deals for the first time in a month. It, it, and I'll it, just plug here that we prayed before we got started today. And God, the $20 that Marcus gave the homeless man, as I was praying, the Holy Spirit was like, multiply that to 200 and then the Holy Spirit said, okay, multiply that to 2000. And then there was like this resistance that came as I was like, all right, Lord, multiply that to 20,000. Anyway, that's a whole nother story, but we'll, we'll let God get the glory for that later. But yeah. man, I, I, I think the whole point here, he's speaking. Yeah. But are we listening? You know, and um, my story coming out of abuse and, and the fact that my grandmother said, there's not a question in the world that you won't find the answer to in God's word. And Marcus, I can't wait for you to hear the recording of the keynote that God gave me because, man, mm, come on. It was not me. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, That's, a you point. That's a great point. We can't do it on our own. Mm -hmm. And it took me 50 years, 48 years, whenever it was to learn. I try. You know how many half written songs I have because I wanted to get credit for the soul songwriter? Yeah. You know? It's, it's just such a blessing um, to be in his presence. And I don't know about you, but in the morning, uh, you know, when I'm praying, I'll say, come Holy Spirit, I can physically feel Amen. the Holy Spirit. Not that the Holy Spirit's not always in my body, but I can physically feel the Holy Spirit come on. And I get that message if I'm listening to, um, you know, one of my devotionals in the morning or that thing. But I do want to impress upon people, it took me forever to learn, 
let's say you and I, Angela, we're talking over each other right now, or we're just talking, and both of us are talking at one time, and we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. Nobody's going to understand a word we say. So if you don't stop talking and start listening, if you don't go into your room and close the door and get quiet, mm. how are you going to hear him? You know, I always have to have music on in the car. Yeah. And my wife says, sometimes I just want to be silent. Mm. She taught me, sometimes I'll turn off the music in the car and I'll talk to God. Mm. Folks, you can talk to God while you're driving. You can talk to God in the shower. You can talk to God while you're exercising. You can talk to God while you're playing your guitar. Whatever it is, you can talk to God. It doesn't have to be in church, on a pew, in front of everybody. Come on. It doesn't have to be in front of everybody. Yeah. When when I started doing women's retreats um, last year, and God just, the Holy Spirit just absolutely took control of everything. (laughs) He just was like, this is not your thing. This is my thing. So just kind of step back. I got this. And so, but what he told me was two things gather women, Mm. usher them into my presence. Mm. And this is what I love about what you're sharing right now is that what does it actually look like? You know, when we're at church, it's like you fold your hands to pray, stop and bless your food, blah, 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 blah. But like, no, really. When some financial crisis happens in your life, where do you go? Yeah. What does it look like to get on your face before God? Yeah. What does it look like when you have a relationship crisis and your heart is broken and you don't know what to do? What is a pr- prayer work? It's like, seriously, like, I, I, I feel like what God wants is for us to reveal. I mean, I, I've honestly felt like lately that I should put my camera up in my prayer room and video what happens in there. Because what happens is there in there is that I have a place that I have my Bible. I have a journal. I have a pen. I have a little sound machine thingy that sounds like birds or waves or whatever I'm feeling that day. And I have a pillow that I can put my knees on and an ottoman that I can put my elbows on. And some days I just sit there and cry. So what does it look like to be in the presence of God? What does it look like when you're desperate for answers and you don't know what to do because you can run around doing a whole bunch of things. Yeah. And doesn't the enemy want you to clean a toilet and dust a room and go have a drink and meet a friend and, you know, do whatever else. When the Holy Spirit's saying, come here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hardest thing about it. Yeah, that's the hardest thing about it, too. You know, and and once again, our dear sister Tamara says, you know, don't use the word busy. Uh-uh. Um, and I stole this line from a, a sister, Joy Farley from Breakfast with Champions. I heard her say this once. She says, I say I'm heavily booked and blessed. And I, I stole that. Right. Come on. I'm heavily booked and blessed. But sim- I mean, we're, we're so similar. The same thing for me. I have what I call my little poofta which is my knee pillow thing, you know, it's real soft. <laughs> my pillow is chin up buttercup. That's so funny. <laughs> um, so I get my little poof done. I put my knees on it. And like you, I'm on my couch or a chair or whatever that be. I just move. So I'm still setting stuff up. Um, mm-hmm. I finally got an office. I got an office. I, got an I office. love it. Congratulations. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> But it's, it's getting on my knees and being silent. And I don't, I don't want to say I always, like this morning I didn't get on my knees. I'll lay down on the couch with my mm-hmm. devotional. Because yeah. I, like, I like that whole body. I mean, like when I say come Holy Spirit, it's a whole body thing. You know, mm-hmm. and, I, and, I, and it's, not a, it's not my mind. If I'm on my knees, it comes from behind and I can feel it on my back. I like to feel the whole body thing. So I lay down mm-hmm. sometimes to pray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To receive. Um, but man, it's, 
You know, and a lot of us start our day that way. Uh, I, I'm firmly, I'm a big believer in that, but you don't always have to do it first thing when you wake up. I mean, you can do it any time of the day, but if, if you get silent and, you know, you were talking about relationship stuff and I'll, I'll get emotional Good. talking about this because I love my wife so much, you know, mm-hmm. and, and when we get into an argument, it's always my fault, but now I've learned that I can pray it away. Yeah. You know, God, please help me get through this. Please turn my mouth off, you know, uh, help, because I, I'm very aware. I have, man, I have a wicked fork tongue, man. I will rip you up in a second and not be proud of it, right? <laughs> I rip you up and spit you out, yeah, brother. Yeah, it's, like, it, 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 it is, it's like the gift and the curse, yeah, right? It's yeah. like the thing that God gave you as a gift, the enemy wants to use that, right? And I, I learned in my 20s. I'm still learning in my 50s. I can chew you up and spit you out and you better get quiet, girl. Like when things happen in my life, it's like, shut that mouth and go in that, go to the place, right? Because then it's just guilt and condemnation and shame when I've said things that I didn't want to say. And I get it, brother. And you know what I appreciate about you, Marcus? Um because this just feels like we're sitting in a living room with friends and just talking. (laughs) It is. And I really appreciate your honesty because what I believe is, and you might want to write this one down and put it up somewhere. Come on. Vulnerability is the path to love. Woo. Vulnerability is the path to love. Vulnerability is what I want most out of you. So today, when I ask you to come on my podcast, what do I want most? I want you to get vulnerable. I want you to tell people the things. But it's the thing that I'm least likely to give of myself. Why? Vulnerability is risky. Vulnerability is jumping out of that airplane at 30,000 feet. But I'll tell you what. It's the path to love. And the reason why you and I love each other like we do is because our spirits are like, oh, yeah, baby, been there, done that. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Would well, like, you remember we got shushed at Grow for God? I we just were- can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking at Grow for God and somebody's like, shh, they're oh, talking. Yeah. Remember, we got shushed out in the alleyway, <laughs> like the walkway, you know, we were like, blah, 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 like we are Shocking. now. Yeah, Shocking. right. But, you know, um, I just appreciate that about you. And, and I knew when I invited you on this podcast that you would bear it all. Yeah. Right? That you would be willing to share your vulnerabilities so that somebody else that's watching who's struggling with something can be like, man, I'm not alone. Nope. Hey, I'll, I'll give you, um, and I'm supposed to be interviewing you, but I'm sharing a lot. Well, myself. No, no, this is great. We can go over too. <laughs> I was at church. And I was struggling because I was smoking. And I was so ashamed of it. And I tried so hard to quit. Okay. Like I would be going down the road and I I had already decided like, I'm not smoking anymore. Right. I'm going to quit. I'm going down the road. The circle K is on my right hand side. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Er, Like every time, every time. And I was a closet everything person. Like I didn't want anybody to know I smelled like I was the good girl, but on the inside, I wasn't, I wanted to escape all those things. So I, I really, really, it's probably what I appreciate about you most is that you shared with me like, Hey, I got struggles. Oh yeah. Big time. You know, uh, I'm an overshare. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's my thing. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really hide much, you know, it, it, in Pensacola is a small town. So everybody, and that's the funny thing. A lot of people are going, ah, oh, look at him. Like, oh, that's, that's not who he is. He, he's the, the drug addict. He's the adulterer. You know, he's the one with the, the forked tongue. But, um, you know, I think, I don't think, I, I know one of the key takeaways from you and I doing this today is prayer. 
if we can just tell people that, um, you know, even at Grow for God, I had somebody tell me, and I want to call it FounderCon now, That's even at FounderCon. Yeah, 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 me too. I had somebody tell me, you cannot pray your addiction away. You need to get in a program. And I was like, game on. That's a bunch of bunk, you know, because whenever I get the, the fever for the flavor, I call it, mm -hmm. I pray. Right. Wow. And whenever I turn into old Mark where I'm blasting my wife with my tongue, I pray, you know, whenever I raise my, I have a really prob bad problem about raising my voice. And a lot of time I'm not even really upset and people like, it's your tone, man. It's your tone. I pray for that, that I don't speak to my daughters that way, that sort of thing. So the key takeaway folks is if you're struggling and I know you are because we all do, nobody's got it easy. Nobody's got it perfect. If they tell you that they're lying to you, right? The key takeaway is prayer. Just pray about it. And if you don't know how to pray, here's something that I learned. Ask God, dear Lord, please teach me how to pray. So good. Please, te please teach me how to be more faithful to you. Please teach me how to be what you designed me to be. And th those prayers are answered. It, I, I continuously get blown away because the prayers get answered. And I hear so many people say, oh, it's going to be years down the road before that prayer gets answered. It's not going to come immediately. Well, right now, everything's coming at me immediately. Well, and I'm like, I shouldn't be surprised. But I am every time. I'm like, dang it. God, you know? like, blow in my mind. But I shouldn't be surprised because this is your character. It's who you are. And we go through seasons of our life. And maybe somebody right now feels like their prayers are hitting the ceiling and falling back down. They're not. Maybe they're in a desert season, right? Those seasons that we go through that we're like, man, God, could you just like throw me a bone over here? Can yeah. you, can we get some interaction? Yeah. He's a seasonal yeah. God. It's his nature. It's the way that he is. And if you look at his word, it shows you. And that's what I want to say is yes, prayer. Yes, prayer. Yes, time with God. You know, one thing that I do, and I like to give people like actual steps, right? right. Like I don't need to say, this is what my life looks like. I want to say, this is how I did it. Right. So for me, I set my alarm back 15 minutes every week until I created enough space in my morning that made me feel like I had enough time with God. Mm. So now I get up at 4 a.m. and people are like, what in the world? Right. Yeah. Well, I used to get up at seven. Right. So how many weeks did it take for me to set my alarm back 15 minutes to feel like, man, this is the time I need with God. Like, this is good. This is the amount of time. So yeah. that's an actual step for you. That's something that you can do today. Right? Yeah, I did the same thing. Um, it got a little bit nutty because I got to 3.30 a.m. Um, and it... <laughs> And it, it got a little bit nutty. So, uh, and I still wish I, I could because uh, that was the amount of time that I needed to be with God and then go run and do the things that I needed to do before I got my kids up. But I realized that uh, I was trading that for my family because I'd fall asleep too early on the couch or something. So uh, it's, it's now backed, backed up to four, um, sometimes 4.30, sometimes five. But however, still, every day because I had created that habit doing the same thing right. you did the incremental steps. I still wake up at three 30 every day and make myself go back to sleep. It's okay. You know, yeah. um, but what we're saying folks is create enough space to spend that time with God silently because it is so rewarding and it is so fulfilling. And I really want to say it's not because I'm so great. It's not because I'm so awesome. It's not that I'm not tooting my own horn. I just want to, you to feel like I feel right now. And I'm going to say something else. And I know we got to go soon. I struggle with depression, hardcore. And you were saying those seasons, right? And right now I'm on that high, you know, uh, Laura, Laura says, I think you're manic depressive because when you're up, man, you're like, Wah! and when you're down, nobody can reach you. Yeah. And everybody can see on social media and in our groups of friends that I'm always around. And then when you see me escape, I'm not doing okay. Right. And, and that's when, I have to lean into it. I used to trade that not okay time for drugs and that would extend the not okay time. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> right. But when I get into the not okay and I pray, it, it shortens that period of time. 
we're not going to always be happy. We're not always going to be on top of the mountain. We're not always going to be thriving. We're going to have some tough challenges. I just had a bunch of, I have celiac disease. I can't eat wheat or gluten, but I just got diagnosed with prediabetes, uh, some heart issue or what, whatever. And I prayed about it for God to remove all the disease from my body and all my children's body and everything. I went back to the doctor and they're like, we don't know what's going on, but your numbers are back to normal. Everything's back to normal. <laughs> Brother. You don't know what was happening there. And, 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 and I know that I still have to take care of myself and eat properly and drink lots of water and all that stuff, which I have a really hard time doing. But folks, if you're depressed, it's okay. You're going to make it through this. You know, do I think about suicide? Yeah. Is that the answer? No, absolutely not. Right. Just pray. It's okay that you're not doing all right. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. No. You're human. It's normal. You know? There was only one perfect human, right? Yeah. In this world, there will be tribulation. <laughs> it's going to happen. We're all so, going to go through it. Yeah. Why are we striving for perfection? Stop. Mm -hmm. Strive for excellence. You can be excellent because you already are. Stop trying to be perfect. Stop worrying about what they think about you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So good, my friend. Listen, I knew this was going to be a blessing and we're going to have to get, we're going to have to do this again. Like, I feel yeah. like you and I need like a show. Well, you got to come on mine. Well, ooh, you just, well, that was just God. That wasn't you. <laughs> Oh, I, I just got to do, hold on. It's like, let's see. What is, what do I got here? No, not that one. Because <laughs> I am like the female version of you. It's ridiculous. I feel like you're, and when I say brother, I feel like you're my brother. So anyway, yeah. Marcus, thank you so much for thank your heart, you. for your vulnerability, how you love people, how you're real. And I, that's what I want. Right. There's a song that um, I can't remember who sings it, but it's called um, The Real Thing. Mm. I want the real thing. Like I'm it's done. It's not you too, it. is it? Huh? Not you too, that song. No, right? it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's worship. a worship Christian band. I'll have to, I'll put it I'll in the show. But I want the real thing, man. I want the real thing. I'm done pretending. Yeah. Right. Because I like to look pretty, but I, that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Right. Don't be deceived. Because under the makeup and the sparkles and the earrings and all the things is a woman that cries. Is a woman that feels crushed by life sometimes. Hmm. Is a woman that jumps out of the plane, scared to death. And praying that my wings will grow on the way down. Ooh, that's good. So you're one of my favorite people in the whole entire world. So right. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going right. to continue when I get back to New Orleans, we're going to have lunch. Let's have lunch on the beach and eat some clams or oysters or something. Or I'll meet you over there at Lucy's or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. You guys got to come over and do a show, but I just also want to say, I love your family. I love your husband, Aaron. I love your daughter, Emily. They're, they're my favorite people too. So yeah, we'll, we'll just, uh, it's a family affair. You know, we'll just do it. <laughs> All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining you. us. Thank you. Peace.